was just read. Well, here we are, pretty much getting towards the middle of football season, I guess you could say. High school sports are really going left and right. We have good teams all around us. Colleges played yesterday again, and my concern is given to those who are of the Texas A&M people. May God be with you as well as the Texas people, too. The UT people and the A&M people both suffered some losses yesterday, but there's always next week. Rob, right? Okay. Well, I'm going to share a story about football, and that football concerns uh, traditional football power teams such as Michigan State and UCLA. The score was tied with only 14 seconds left to play, and the coach, Duffy McDarty, uh, Michigan State's coach, sent in a place kicker. His name was Dave Kaiser, and he booted a field goal that won the game. Everyone was excited. And when Kaiser returned to the bench, the coach said, nice going. And Darby noted with some surprise, he said, but you didn't watch the ball after you kicked it. And Kaiser said, that's right, coach. I was watching the referees instead to see how he'd signal it. You see, coach, I forgot my contact lenses, and I couldn't see the goal. <laughs> wow. What every football team needs is a vision-impaired field goal kicker. That would make things really difficult. Football, and indeed all sports, are a wonderful part of our culture, particularly the college football, college debut. People are so creative in how they express themselves. When an unranked team beats a ranked team, we say that that team was the underdog, and the underdog won. For some reason, we always want the lesser teams to win. The lesser ranked teams have a soft heart in our hearts, I guess, and we're always rooting for the underdog. We cheer for them so many times. What is interesting about all sports is that there are many people who are always cheering for that person, the underdog. Anybody here cheer for the underdog when they're on? I know I do. There are some hands going up saying, there's never, you better put your hand up. You cheer for the underdog sometimes. And that's the way it goes. Have you ever noticed, though, that our text for today, the Gospel of St. Matthew, seems to show us that Jesus knew what it was to be an underdog. Jesus was not expected to win. If you would talk to the Pharisees and Sadducees, they would say, he's not going to win this at all. And the writer Matthew puts it this way, and I don't know if you realize, but he was actually quoting Psalm 118 when he said, and I quote, Have you ever, never read in the scriptures, he asked, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it has been marvelously in our eyes. End of quote. These words have brought inspiration to millions of people throughout the ages. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Key words for this morning. First of all, I'd like to emphasize that Jesus knows what it is to be rejected. It, sa it, it says of him, the stone the builders rejected. That is a clear reference to Christ. Jesus was rejected by his own people. That's the first thing that we need to see. Jesus knows what it is to battle overwhelming odds. He knows what it is to be disrespected, to be in great pain, and ultimately to, come to confront death. He knows what it is to be the underdog. Remember that. The next time that you're in a very tight spot in your life, remember that when you are rejected, when you lose the big contract, when things go bad for you in life, when you get the bad news from the doctors, even the final door, the door of death is closing in your face. Jesus has faced it all. He understands what you are going through. He's understood what every person has been going through the last seven months that we've been separated. He understands everything that you go through in your life, the good, the bad, and the ugly. He knows what it is to be on that losing end, and that is important. Sometimes all of us are underdogs. At least we've been underdogs at some point in time in our lives. If you look at yourself as a top dog and think that you will never be on the losing side of things, just wait. It will happen. Sin is in the world. 
Bad things happen to good people. Life happens, and all of us, sooner or later, will not will draw the short straw. There are times when we're all the underdogs. We've all agree on that. Few of us will go through our lives unscathed by disappointment and sometimes outright despair. Because each one in this room this morning, listening to us on the radio, all understand what it is to go through a hard time. It may be a marital situation. It may be professional failure. It may be a physical impairment. It may be a family situation. And, of course, all of us die sooner or later from something. I like the story of C.D., better known as Big Boy Blaylock. He was a boxer back in the 1930s. And no, I wasn't alive to watch him box. Y'all may be thinking that, but I was not. But he, Playlock fought one time against an, un an unnamed boxer out of Mississippi. The only reason his name is remembered, and people remember the name Big Boy, is because of the dubious distinction that he had earned in that fight. You see, Big Boy was a big boy. And he was a great boxer. He was a powerful man. And he had a devastating roundhouse bowl. And he knocked out many an opponent. And he decided that he was going to use this move against a boxer from Mississippi. Unfortunately, the second that big boy swung that famous roundhouse pitch, that roundhouse pitch of his fist around, that blow, at that very moment, the boxer, the opponent boxer, stepped forward. Big boy's arm was only in full swing, was already full swing, and went around the man's head, and big boy ended up hitting himself in the face instead of his opponent. Big boy fell back, he fell to the ground, and was out for the count. He had been, he goes down in history as the only boxer that knocked himself out. Thankfully, most of us are not like Big Boy. Thankfully, we don't set ourselves up for failure and knock ourselves out of the picture. Thankfully, we have ways to handle the bad things when they happen, when they happen to us. Oh, we win a few in life, we lose a few in life, we hang in there and we keep on fighting, and we never give up because of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and what we have to hang on because of Him in our lives. Even though you and I still go through those very discouraging moments. That's why it is important to know that Jesus not only was the underdog and understands what it is to lose, but Jesus was also victorious and teaches us that you and I can be victorious as well. Life is hard. Most of us will cope with the deep valleys that we go through that we encounter. Most of us will move on and go on to the next mountain to climb and the next valley and go on and so forth. But still, all of us at some time or another will suffer a few body blows that are hard to come through and are hard to get through. And it's when those times are the hardest that we need to lean on the everlasting loving arms of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We win a few in life. We lose a few in life. We hang in there and we keep on fighting. But sometimes it does get discouraging. That's why it is so important to know that Jesus not only was the underdog and understands what it is to lose, but Jesus was also victorious and teaches us that we, as followers of Christ, can be victorious as well. Notice those words again. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. These are important words. And Jesus is speaking to a crowd that included scribes and Pharisees. This was a very established religious organization that would be responsible even for the death of Jesus on the cross. You need a, to understand about a cornerstone. A cornerstone is everything when building a structure. A cornerstone is laid at the very beginning in the foundation. Everything else is built around that cornerstone. 
If the cornerstone is straight and square, everything else will be straight and square. If a building leans, it will not endure. Jesus the stone was rejected, became the cornerstone, the most important stone in the new temple, which God alone was, was constructing. The underdog would become the victor. And so it is with everyone who follows our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Christian faith is a positive faith, a hopeful faith. It is a faith of overcoming obstacles, a faith of believing that no mountain is too high, no valley is too deep. That's who we want to be. People who, by the way and the grace of God, keep moving forward regardless of what life may send us our way. Life has sent so many things in different ways, form, and fashions to you over the last seven months. And it has been Pastor Lisa's in my prayer that God will be with, has been with you and has sustained you. We pray for you constantly that the Lord will be with you during your time of this epidemic that we've been going through and will still go through from this day. But by the grace of God, we keep on moving. We keep on moving forward regardless of what life may send. But it is not our own strength that we conquer. It is the Lord who is our strength. It is God who gives us victory. And here's the good news for the day. If you trust in God, you will ultimately win with God. We have the John 3.16 promise. We have other promises in John about how God is the way, the truth, and the life, and that he will be there at everything we go through. Yes, all of us will sometime know what it is to be like an underdog. At such times, it is good news to know that Jesus was an underdog as well. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. It is marvelous in our eyes as Christ was victorious. And through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you and I can be victorious as well. May God be with you. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.